Hello and welcome. This is Amanda Bido with Teen Services, joined by Jennifer Nisley. I'm one of the assistants in the reference department. And you are watching one of our teen reference sessions. This session is called Warren Uncharted. This is all about the expedition of Warren, maps of Warren, kind of the layout of Warren, and some of the first. So we're really excited to bring this to you. And we're going to jump right in with Jen starting off talking about the expeditions. All right. The earliest expedition to our area happened in 1739. Baron Longuil, and that's the best French accent I can give you. I'm I think sorry. pretty good. <laughs> headed up a French expedition from Montreal. He and his party passed through the present-day site of Warren in August of 1739, and this was the first incursion of the French into this region. The next expedition was led by Captain Celeron. He and his party of 215 French soldiers and 55 Native Americans stopped at the present-day site of Warren in 1749 to bury a lead plate and claimed the region for the King of France. The engraved lead plate was buried near the mouth of the Conomongo Creek on the south side of the Allegheny River. And this map, which Amanda's gonna zoom in for us, shows Celeron's route um, north near Lake Erie and heading south through the Ohio River Valley. And so obviously as a Frenchman, his map is in French. So for those of you who are able to read French, you might be interested in taking a closer look at this map. And then the third expedition was led by Colonel Broadhead. He and his American military force passed through the present day site of Warren in 1779. And finally, in 1795, the town of Warren was laid out by the commissioners of the Commonwealth, General William Irvin and Andrew Ellicott, an American land surveyor. And Amanda's gonna talk a little bit more about this map that you see here. All right, so here is this map of the first survey. This kind of lays out how the city of Warren is going to look right along the Allegheny River. So the first warrants bought in were in 1794, purchased by the Holland Land Company who acquired 100,000 tracts of land and a General George Meade who acquired 1,000 tracts of land. Now, for many years after the survey was done in 1795, there was a lot of controversy over the survey and whose land was actually whose. In 1814, it was resurveyed by Colonel Samuel Dale, and those are the surveys that uh, continued on throughout the rest of Warren's history. Now, Warren was formed in 1800 with 416,000 acres of land. In 1819, it became the county seat and it became a borough in 1832 and then later known as a city. The population of the county by 1870 was 23,897 people. Today, that um, population of just the city of Warren is just under 10,000. So it's kind of interesting to see that number, even though this was the county and it's a little more spread out. Um, it still doesn't even equal the population today for inside the city. And Warren is named after the Revolutionary War hero, Joseph Warren. So next, John's gonna talk a little more about our first settlers. All right, so although the town of Warren was not named after an early settler, some of the towns in Warren County were including Akeley, named after Joseph Akeley, Irvin, named after General William Irvin, which Amanda and I, we just talked about him in the previous slide, a Russell, named after Robert Russell, Wrightsville, named after John Wright, and Youngsville, named after Matthew Young. 
And then you can see here on this slide, I've added some other early settler names. Um, some you may recognize, the names are still floating around out there, um, such as the Mead family. We have a Mead township and a Mead island. Um, so Darius and Joseph Mead were one of the earliest settler, settlers to this area. We have Robert Miles in Sugar Grove, John McKinney in Broken Straw Township, Hugh Marsh in Farmington Township, Timothy Barnes in Sheffield, and Samuel Grandin in Tidyu. And of course, the history of Warren County and its people would not be complete without mentioning John O'Bale, also known as Corn Planter. He was a Seneca chief and contemporary of George Washington, and he negotiated a treaty with the U.S. government on behalf of the Six Nations. And if anyone can name that treaty, drop it in the comments and all the correct answers are going to drawing for a little prize from us. So next, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the heritage of the first settlers and some of the first occupations. So of course the French is who found this area. So you will find some French um, first settlers and Jen mentioned a couple of those but you also will find Scottish and Irish first settlers, many that came from the other side of the state in the southeastern side of Pennsylvania, as well as different parts of New England. And of course, the Seneca people were already here at that time. In the late 1800s, most of the settlers you will find are German and quite a bit of Swedish and Italian in there too. Some of the first occupations of our first settlers was mainly in lumber and timber business. Uh, again, this area was full of fresh timber from the Allegheny National Forest. So this was a no brainer. People came in and became wealthy very, very quickly by sending the, the lumber and timber down our waterways to other places such as Pittsburgh and so on, and made a lot of money. And of course the people boating the lumber made a lot of money as well. Some of the major families in Timber is Mead and Marsh and Irvin were huge names at that time. Agriculture was also big at that time. We have great soil, great uh, place right along the river. And then of course, as timber is being torn down, there's more and more space for agriculture. So some first settler names for that is John Gleason, James Morrison, Martin Reese. And then there's some tanneries as well and mills and things like that. Anything that was related to lumber, furniture companies, things like that. But then in the late 1800s, came oil, which was huge. And many of the first settlers already had their hand in the lumber business, but then also got their hands in the oil business, which made them wealthy very, very fast. Then the railroad uh, system started to come in this area. Again, names like Struthers and so on had their hands in railroad as well as oil, again, making them very, very wealthy. And we need it bankers in this area because the wealth from all these natural resources and all these different things happening so quickly in Warren, someone needed to understand money and keep track of it. And then we needed people to keep track of records as well as running uh, publishing. So printing became very big at that time as well. So next, we're gonna talk about one of the oldest homes in Warren. Many of you probably have seen this home. It is at the corner of Third Avenue and Liberty. It is often called as the Jackson Sill House or just the Sill House. It was one of the first sites in Warren, Pennsylvania because it was the site of the Holland Land Office. At that time, it was just a shack um, and it went through the Marsh family to Thomas Jackson, and in 1830, Thomas Jackson built this house that we see today, and it became the Sill House in 1861. So I am originally from Chautauqua County, so I 
had to learn all about the early years of Warren through the many different books that we have at the library. And I was so grateful for many of these. And I believe that if you want to start your journey into early Warren, these are some great starters to start with. So I would start with Atlas of Warren County, Pennsylvania, 1878, has great maps in there um, to cover all the different townships and things like that. But it also has a lot of records, a lot of statistics, and a lot of early history recorded in there. The historic buildings of Warren County is one that Jen pointed out to me when I first got here. I've always loved the old buildings here in Warren, always wanted to learn a little more about them. This is the source and it's wonderful. Um, I highly recommend that one. Now, if you really wanna see some pictures of Warren, check out The Way We Were or Opening the Pages of the Past Wondrous Warren. Great, great accounts of our early history, lots of wonderful photos in those. And of course, you can't miss the Shank book. <laughs> so Shank was actually the editor to the history of Warren County, Pennsylvania, but that's just what this book is referred to. I remember sitting here one night, someone came in, wanted to look at the Shank book, and I just looked at Jen like, what is the Shank book? And she pulled this out and it's like the Bible of Warren County history is really fascinating and I highly recommend it. And then the Some Special People of Warren County is actually a compilation of just some articles about some different people that were very prominent at the time and settling uh, Pennsylvania. This is a very good one as well. Next, Jen is going to give us a nice overview of our map collection. So we have um, this map drawer you can see here on the photograph in the slide. Um, all these map drawers and there's maps from all over the place, um, but there's at least three drawers that are dedicated to Warren, Warren County, and the surrounding region. So I just wanted to give you some ideas of the dates and the coverage of some of these maps. So an early one that we have available is the 1838 map of Warren County. Uh, we also have a large 1900 map of Warren County, which is actually framed. Um, it's in the hallway just outside of the reference department. So I encourage you to come in and take a look at that. It's really, really neat to, to look through um, how that map is organized. We have a 1940 map of just the city of Warren. We have some highway maps of Warren County, um, several dates of those, including 1954 and 1971. We have a Warren County scenic and historic map from 1957. There's the Corn Planter Kingdom field map from 1970. And then there's also a 1980 census map of the city of Warren. And as Amanda mentioned earlier, we have that 1878 Atlas of Warren County. We have several copies of those. Um, so I encourage you to come in and take a look at that. Um, another one that we get requests for is um, what are known as plat books. Um, these were published periodically between 1969 and 2010. And they were distributed by the Warren County 4-H Development Council. And what they do is they show the boundaries and ownership of all the rural properties in the county. Um, the next one is the Sanborn Fire Insurance Maps of Warren. And so these are available either in here in print in the library in our Pennsylvania room or online. Uh, most of them are available online through the Library of Congress website. So what these maps show is not just street names and property boundaries, um, but also building blueprints, um, the materials that were used to build these buildings, um, the height or number of stories of each building, what the buildings were used for at the time, the lot lines, the road widths, the water facilities, the different utilities. Um, so, these maps were drawn between 1887 and 1949 by the Sanborn Map Company. 
And then the last thing that I wanted to mention in terms of maps is that we do have these copies of um, map, a current map of Warren and Warren County. And these are available for free. We do get requests for these a lot. So if you are in need of a current map of the area, you are welcome to stop by the reference department and just ask for one. And if you need help reading a map, not a problem. I'm pretty sure we have a book about that. So the last thing we wanna chit chat about before you leave us today is we are going to show you how you can access some of our early newspapers uh, right on our, our databases online. Uh, we do have the most earliest newspaper, which was called the Kanawango Immigrant. And that ran from 1824 to 1825. And it was started by Richard Hill, was a huge uh, figure at getting publishing and printing going in Warren County. You will actually find him in that compilation I talked about uh, with some special people of Warren County. But he started this paper as a weekly publication starting in July of 1824. The earliest one we have it is not online, but it is here in the reference room on microfilm is December 2nd, 1824. And you can take that, put it on one of our microfilm readers. We can show you how to use that. It's really cool to check out. But for the ones that we have online, you're going to go to warrenlibrary.org, go to online resources. I like to use this alphabetical list of electronic resources gives you a whole nice list of all of our resources in alphabetical order. Now our newspaper archives is the newspaper archives as well as newspapers.com world edition. We're gonna use the newspaper archives today. And if you go up to publications, here you can search which kind of publications we have in Warren, Pennsylvania. And as you can see, Warren had several newspapers over the years, many overlapping each other. But it's really interesting to see all these different ones. These are a huge favorite here in the reference room. People love seeing these online as well as coming in and using the microfilm reader. Now, the oldest one we have here is the Warren Immigrant. So it's not the Conowango one. You click in there. And we have one publication here from October of 1825. It has four pages, so it shows you all the information that you need to see. You can click right into the paper and you can use all the zoom and cutting and all these different uh, tools. So before you leave us today, thank you so much for joining us for this session. And we hope that you will go back to the website and enjoy some of the other sessions that we recorded for you this summer. And don't forget, we have a quiz available on the website that you can take. It's a very quick, easy quiz, but it gets you into a drawing for some dips in theater gift cards. So again, thank you so much. Thank you. And have a great day.